Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Calamity Let's Play episode. We are playing as Silas the Summoner and we are playing Calamity on death mode. Last episode we defeated the Eye of Cthulhu, we farmed up the Desert Scourge, and we also defeated the King Slime. This episode we've got several bosses to defeat, like we've got the Crapulon boss, we've got the Giant Clam mini boss, Acid Rain, quite a few things like Brain of Cthulhu, lots of these early game bosses. But I actually started filming, or I thought I did, like 30 minutes ago. So I've been doing all sorts of stuff, and I accidentally forgot to press start on the filming software. First time I've actually ever done that in all of the times I've played Terraria. What I did this start of the episode was defeat the Goblin Army, and basically this little Luxor's Gift, that thing right there, pierces. And so I stood right on top of the base, and it just went back and forth, and all of the goblins just gathered in the base and got demolished by this. It was one of the easiest and fastest goblin armies I've ever done. And then I pretty much sorted my inventory um, and went and explored the left side of the map. I found that we've got a dungeon over here. And then right about here, I realized I didn't remember starting the film, but at least I caught it early enough in the episode that we hadn't fought any bosses or anything like that. Oh, we got a blood moon. We can do the similar method on the Blood Moon as we did with the Goblin Invasion, maybe? Although there's too many enemies up top. Maybe if I close my door like this? I guess I could even just AFK right here and just let my little summons destroy this. If you notice, our NPCs aren't actually taking any damage. Like the nurse right there is just going to be invincible. And the reason for that is because I use a mod called Friendly NPCs Don't Die. And I think it's pretty useful since I like to organize my NPCs in a particular way and kind of memorize where they're located. And that way I'm not just running around my base looking for them all the time. The problem with organizing your NPCs is whenever you have like a mechanical boss or something that goes through your base, all of your NPCs die or a whole bunch of them die. And then you have to reorganize everything. And it's kind of a pain. But it's super nice not to worry about NPCs dying and having to wait for the day for them to respawn or something. Uh-oh. We gotta get back in base, close this up. I wanted to grab some items before they despawn. Because there is an item cap in this game. And once when you get over that cap, it starts despawning items to make room for more. Oh, we can actually drop some banners just to speed this up a little bit. So what I've learned about Summoner so far is that random things are way more difficult like the Eye of Cthulhu. Figuring out how to do that was quite challenging because most of my summons were too slow. But then things like this, like invasions, become almost trivial because you just kind of stand here and your summons do all the work. Well, the night is over and we got so much loot from that and a lot of gold. Usually something like that in death mode would be pretty challenging right at this point in the game. But this house works super well to protect ourselves. All the enemies just climb on the bottom. We did just get our money trough, but we don't actually need it now because we've got all of those piggy banks. And so we can craft our mobile piggy bank now. And this is a super useful item. It's basically the same as the money trough. You place it right there and then you can actually store stuff in it. So let's go ahead and use our gravitation potion and then see what we can find up in the sky. I'm hoping for a horseshoe or something like that. Here we go. A menacing horseshoe. Oh, here's our corruption island where we can get the Scourge of the Corruptor. And now that we have the ocean crest, we can actually go into the ocean. Although I think this is going to be the Sulphurous Sea. Oh, it is. And there's acid rain. I guess we're going to need to just put some platforms across this. I don't really know if the Sulphurous Sea event can really give us much. I think it only gives like the rogue stuff early pre-hard mode. But it's still fun to do. And I know they've changed lots of things, so all the stuff I think I know about Calamity isn't quite the same anymore. So another thing that I really like about Summoner so far is that I can build arenas so easily. This would be such a great time to have a loot magnet because I can't really stay under the water too long. Well, it's actually decently easy to grab stuff in this biome because we've got the Victite armor. I can run pretty quick down here. Oh dear, they do a lot of damage. So here's the Effigy of Decay. 
This will let us breathe underwater and be immune to sulfuric poisoning. That would be excellent. I'm going to go ahead and craft two of those so we can place those at different points around the sulfur sea. Actually, this is a pretty good glowing mushroom biome. Ooh, boulder. Oh my goodness, the goblin just appeared right there. Sweet. We got to grab our rocket boots and we have just enough for a tinker workshop. Okay, I think this is going to be the Krabulon Arena. This will convert pretty easily because it's a pretty high roof and then mushroom biome right on the ground. Oh, cool. We can do a diamond hook as well. That's going to be much better than our slime hook. Yeah, our reach just increased by 10. So the other things we can craft, the cloud and the balloon and the blue horseshoe balloon. We should also be able to do specter boots. We don't have the ankle of the wind yet, so we can head over to our jungle and go find one of those real quick. There we go. We only did like three or four chests until we found it. That is one of my most efficient jungle expeditions. And now we just need to purchase some ice gates. There we go, lightning and frost spark. Well, I went ahead and added some platforms and a ton of torches. So we've got an arena now. All I need to do is break some orbs and we've got these boots and unlimited fall damage protection much higher jumps, all sorts of good stuff. Those accessories really made a huge difference. I farmed up a little bit of gold and re-rolled a few times. So we've got a couple better things, but I wasn't able to get much of like menacing or warding, but we got a few angry and like, like a guardian or a few things like that. So we should be a little bit better, but definitely need some more gold to get some better modifiers later on. Although a lot of this stuff we're gonna upgrade soon anyways, so we probably don't even need to worry about it. Let's get into the arena and hope for the best. This boss can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Definitely not one that I'm as confident on. I've done the Eater of Worlds almost every playthrough. Wow, there's a lot of enemies. At least spawns are disabled. So we should be able to have this boss fight all to ourselves here soon instead of having our little minions going after everything but the boss. Okay, I'm just gonna focus on dodging. I was trying to think about too much stuff. I was thinking which summon I could switch to that would maybe do more damage. But I think that's maybe something I shouldn't be thinking about right now. Seeing as though I was having a hard time even staying alive there. Okay, I've got Rage and Adrenaline ready. Almost. Use both of them at the same time. Perfect. I've really missed Rage and Adrenaline mechanics. They add so much to boss fights. I think I may really struggle with this final part, since I normally do like... Oh, I don't even remember this. I'm used to the master mode and expert mode, where he doesn't charge at you. Okay, maybe we can get rid of some of these and put our sun staff and our blossom cross staff. At least we got good mobility and a decent arena. I spent longer on this arena because I really don't want to have to farm up things to try to fight this boss because the summon takes a while to craft. I like this boss fight more right now than normal. Oh no, it's starting to do the crazy extra stuff. Okay, we got Rage and Adrenaline. At least my summons kind of show me where the boss is. 
Oh no. Dang it, why am I getting hit every time now? This is really tripping me out. Okay, I'm just like pure concentration here. Oh no. Come on, Rito, you got this. Oh my gosh, no, 10 seconds. No, we were so close, 4.9%. Oh, it says a meteorite just landed. That's nice. Okay, here we go. Boss has summoned. It looks like we're doing better damage. I really like these laser attacks. Let's have the ice and the fire one going at the same time. Ooh, here we go. Rage and Adrenaline. Oh no, what's going on? What is going on? Oh my gosh. What the heck was that? I got so stun locked. If we manage to come back from that, that will be insane. We might be able to do this. No, my gosh, we got down to 6% again. That last fight was actually pretty good for the middle part. It was just that beginning where I got stun locked up in the corner. And that really just made it a much more difficult fight than it needed to be. Go ahead and just use adrenaline, get through this phase quickly. There we go. Now we're to the next phase. That's so fast. I'm gonna turn off my map. Less distractions. You just focus on the boss. There we go, crazy damage. There we go, that was clean. <laughs> that was so clean. I feel like the Shield of Cthulhu dash doesn't give us immunity frames anymore because I dashed a few times into the boss just out of old habit and it didn't really seem to assist me. So I'm going to have to look into that. So here we go. We have the Brain of Confusion. Not like the Master Mode Brain of Confusion. That thing was amazing. The Lucky Stress Pills. Ooh, yes. Stress Pills. They've reskinned them. So it's boost your defense by 4 and max movement speed and acceleration by 5%. Receiving a hit causes you to only lose half of your max adrenaline rather than all of it. And it's a revenge drop. And this right here is the perforator. <laughs> if we wanted to, we could actually maybe try to defeat it. Um, I don't know how to actually target it though. Okay, I guess we just have to break it with our pickaxe because our summons do not recognize it as an enemy. I think I'm going to get completely demolished by them, but let's just give it a try. This might be not nearly a big enough arena. Because I think we need to just fight this above the Crimson Biome. This is very Krabulon. Is it like similar to Krabulon? Yeah, this is rough. Oh my gosh. 
Yeah, I was not prepared for that. We'll definitely have to do that above this arena to, so we can run back and forth more. I honestly don't really remember the mechanics of the perforator at all. And now that we've got our tissue samples, we can actually craft a crimson altar so we don't have to run down to the crimson every time we need to craft something. And the reason I wanted that was to craft the Krabulon Summit. We can craft the Krabulon Sprout. I built an arena that's a bit overkill for Krabulon, and I don't know if we need to keep them in the mushroom biome, because it doesn't all stay as a mushroom biome. But I want to go ahead and try this, see if we can do it. Let's get two of these going. And I think this will do a good job against the boss. Okay, let's get our buffs. Okay, we're doing 100 damage or so. The main thing I'm struggling with is contact damage. Oh my goodness. I guess this is not a big enough arena. I mean, it's gotta be big enough. This took a while to build. I'd hate to have to expand it. Okay, let's go with some Rage. I think we just need to keep them low before we try to get over top of them. It's just gonna be practice with this guy. We're doing it pretty sloppy, and we already got him down to 50%, so I think we'll get him on this second attempt. Okay, so it is time to try this again. See how it goes. Already have rage right at the start. Perfect. Man, these little summons. I need to find a summon that suits me. It's like there's too much stuff to distract the summon. Oh, there we go. I forgot that I can right click. There we go. We have Krabulon defeated. Mushroom Plasma Root permanently increases the duration of rage by one second. Cool. And then we've got the Shroomerang and the Fungal Clump. Summons a Fungal Clump to fight for you. It latches onto enemies and steals their life. Very cool. Man, we have so many cool accessories. It's hard to decide which ones I even want. I think that's a good place to end this episode. We defeated Krabulon, we defeated the Brain of Cthulhu, we did the Blood Moon, and we did the Acid Rain event. So many cool things this episode. Next episode, we definitely got the Perforators. Uh, we'll probably skip the Old One's army. So maybe the Queen Bee and Skeletron. Lots of good things coming up. So if you're enjoying this series, be sure to like and subscribe so you can catch the next episodes. It's gonna be a ton of fun. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.